Hey guys, well, we got the matchup that everybody predicted. We got the Vancouver Canucks versus the Nashville Predators in round one, starting this Sunday in Vancouver, Rogers Arena, first home game in nine years. And it's gonna be electric. Morrison, comes right under front. Morrison scores! Brendan Morrison, a silencer! Knocked down in front, Brendan Morrison scores! That is one great set of hands from Brendan Morrison. Throws the puck on goal, Morrison scores! Brendan Morrison in overtime! Listen to this place! Welcome back to the channel. I know we just, uh, we've only put out a couple of videos so far, but uh, it's, uh, it's been a learning process. It's been an experience. Appreciate the feedback, appreciate the comments. We'll try and touch on a lot of things that you guys have written in about, but uh, hit that subscribe button. Eventually we'll get into some more analysis, uh, tutorials, get some guests on, but um, it's been a busy couple days here for me. Um, getting back into the groove right now. Was busy catching uh, Marlin, 300 pound Marlin. Oh, yeah. But anyways, back to uh, back to hockey. Um, so everybody, uh, we got the matchup that we anticipated. The Vancouver Canucks starting the first round of the 2024 playoffs versus the Nashville Predators. What goes into this? Um, from a player's perspective, Couple different, couple different mindsets here. The mentality of a player. So visiting team Nashville, I got to travel. I'm a wild card team. I got to get on the road. I got to, I get away from my home arena. I get away from my family. I get away from my friends. A lot of people would say less distractions, right? You're, you're getting away. You don't have to deal with everything. You don't, you're in, you're going into uh, enemy territory. The focus really isn't going to be on you. It's going to be about the home team. So, I think the key here for Vancouver in game one is just managing the outside noise, right? It's, uh, okay, I gotta take care of tickets. Who's coming to the game? You know, my family, my parents in town, my brothers and sisters, cousins, you name it. People come out of the woodwork playoff time because they wanna be a part of the excitement. So um, I know what I used to do as a, as a player is uh, I would delegate. I was a very good delegator and uh, my wife was awesome in handling kind of the outside noise this time of year because you need to be 100% dialed in and focused on playing games and putting all of your energy into your preparation, right? Whether that's your, uh, what you're eating, you're sleeping, you know, studying your opponent, watching film, you can't be bothered with all that outside stuff. So having somebody who can manage that for you is a huge, huge asset. So let's, let's go, the Canucks are at home. Um, is there gonna be a bit of pressure on them? For sure there is right? I mean, it's the first game here in nine years. Fans have had a, a great season from this team. They've watched some exciting hockey. Like if you look at this matchup statistically, you know, it's, it's in my opinion, it's not close. Like Vancouver's got a top 10 offense, top 10 defense. They have a better power play. They have a better penalty kill, even though their penalty kill isn't great. It's still better than Nashville's. But as we all know, Nashville has been on uh, has been on a heater here and they have been a very very dangerous team for a long period of time so they're kind of flying in under the radar i don't think many people are expecting nashville to knock off vancouver there's a i've seen a couple people out there that are thinking that it might happen but again talked about it a little bit last video um a lot of times when a team kind of you know is on this upward trajectory right at some point in time they kind of plateau and then they start to decline so I think, I don't know how much longer Nashville can sustain this, right? But, but regardless, I think, all things considered, Vancouver wins this in six. Um, that's, that's kind of what I'm, I'm, I'm that's, that's my feeling here. I think, um, you know, there's, there's going to be a lot of guys that are going to want to have to approve things, right? A lot of guys that haven't had too much playoff experience. So there's a lot of question marks here. What can these guys do come playoff time? You know, certain individuals... Uh, you know, are, are, are being called, not called out, but are, are being focused on, right? Obviously we have Elias Patterson, you know, signed the big deal this year, worth every penny. He's been phenomenal for the team. You know, how is he going to do in his first, uh, well, home playoff game, let's call it. Um, we got other leaders on that team, but again, having one of the best goaltenders in the league and, and UC Soros is a great goaltender, but I think Demko is better. So in all facets of the game, in my opinion, the Canucks have the edge, so um, 
you know, leading towards Vancouver in six. And, and uh, Nashville was always one of my favorite places to go to as a player. A great town, kind of a sleepy, sleepy town early on when they first came into the league, but this place is just boom, just exploded. And it's, uh, it's almost like a mini Las Vegas. You got the strip there, you walk in, you got uh, you know, all these bars with live music, you walk up, put a tip in the jar, request a song. I mean, it's a great authentic time in, in, a, in a town that's uh, super friendly, a lot of great people there. When you go into Nashville and, and this time of year, Again, there's no time for any outside distractions. It's all business, it's, it's focus. So some, some minutia that goes into prepping for playoffs, you know, we talk about, you know, what you can control, like your sleeping, eating, all that stuff. But, you know, there's a lot of detail that goes into um, to the playoffs from the coaching perspective. I remember when I played, we would always get a, uh, a, a pretty thick manual on the opposing team. And, and throughout the course of the year, every time you'd come into a game, we would have game reports that players would read, um, you know, about the opposition tendencies of certain guys. What do they like? What do they don't like? Etc. It's even magnified more and more detailed in the playoffs. You know, every guy will have a report card about other other every guy on the other team. And then f further to that, a lot of times, you know, w with home ice, you know, coaches are going to want to have certain matchups. So you'll have detailed uh, line meetings going over who you're playing against. Okay, uh, centermen, for example, um, you know, how do other centermen like to take face-offs? What are they strong at? What are they weak at? Are they good on their forehand? Are they good on their backhand? You know, how do they like to line up in the circle? Just right down to the details. Obviously, you know, we talk about systems, you know, breakouts, floor checks, neutral zone, um, all that type of stuff. And then what I think is imperative come playoff time is, is, is special teams. A lot of times, that's the difference maker, right? If you got a if you got a, a power play that's that's um, you know heating up or is playing well, or if you have a PK that's shutting down the, the other team uh, the other team's power play, those are those are key moments in in playoff time. Like as an offensive player, when you get on the power play, it gives you a chance to touch, feel, move the puck around, which in turn just makes you feel better about your game. So. Um, and then if you have success on the power play, it, a lot of times it'll translate into five on five success because you feel better about yourself and vice versa on the PK. If you can shut down the op opposition's uh, power play, you know, you're frustrating their, their offensive guys. You're, you're frustrating their, their goal scorers, their playmakers. So, I mean, those, um, those details are important and special teams will play a key, key role. So uh, yeah, yeah, funny story here. Just just thinking about Nashville. Um, I can't remember exactly what year it was. It was mid mid two thousands. I think it was. It might have been 05, 06. Anyways, the year doesn't really matter. But uh, I was with Vancouver, and uh, we were we were kind of coming down the home stretch, getting ready for playoffs, and and we were having a bit of a tough time. We we lost four or five straight, and I remember we had uh, a bunch of individual team meetings in Nashville and uh, sorry, individual player meetings in Nashville. And we had, uh, we had two players on our team, uh, Wade Brookbank and Tyler uh, Bauk, uh, that had primarily just been practicing for us. They, were, they weren't seeing a lot of game action. So I, I remember uh, the coaching staff, uh, Mark Crawford, Jack McElhargy, and uh, Mike Johnson, and, and Barry Smith was there as well. So they, they call, uh, Bowker and Booker in together. They have a, a two-player meeting and the coaches tell these guys, boys, listen, here's what's going to happen down the stretch. Is, there's a good chance you're not going to play any games, but we need you guys to be good teammates. We need you guys to work hard and practice. We need you to push the guys. We need you to keep the mood light and in turn, you know, that should lead to, uh, you know, better morale and, and more team success. So Bowker and Booker are fully on board um, with this uh, you know, kind of meeting with the coaches, I guess challenge from the coaches, just knowing exactly where, where they stand right now and what's expected of them. So we play in Nashville that night and, uh, you know, obviously you come to the game dressed, suit and tie, that's, that's uh, look good, feel good. That's the, the standard protocol, right? And uh, earlier that day, Bowker and, and Booker go out and buy full cowboy, head to toe, cowboy hat, 
you know, they got uh, the plaid shirt, they got big belt buckles, they got the blue jeans and boots. And this is how they show up to the game as cowboys. Uh, <laughs> needless to say, <laughs> the boys loved it. We proceed to get absolutely shellacked by Nashville. I think we lost five nothing. So after the game, Bowker and, and, and Booker are absolutely paranoid. They're petrified of, you know, them trying to lighten the mood for the boys and it, and it, you know, and us not performing, right? Us not uh, going out and getting the job done. So those poor guys, I remember all night, uh, we had some team bonding that night and uh, they, and they, uh, you know, they were pretty, uh, pretty concerned about what the ramifications might be. But the next day, the, you know, the coaches told those guys that uh, that was absolutely phenomenal. Like, that's exactly what they were looking for and, and uh, what our team needed. And after that, we got on a bit of a roll heading into playoffs. So uh, when I think of Nashville, a, a lot of great memories, but that one story really sticks out in my mind. But uh, good matchup here. I think this is the one that the Canucks uh, w was their ideal matchup. And uh, we'll, we'll, we'll start to see uh, Sunday night how things are going to go. I know there's a tremendous amount of excitement in the city and uh, around the league. This is the best time of year as a player. I know, or as a former player, this is the time of year that, that you miss the game. I mean, this is uh, the ultimate time of year to be playing. So uh, that's kind of the take here, guys, uh, for the first round with the Canucks versus the Predators. Um, we'll see how things go, and we'll, we'll stay updated along the way. Maybe we'll do a couple live game, uh, live game chats. That'll be, that'll be kind of fun. But uh, until then, uh, please hit the subscribe button. Again, just st stick with me here for a little bit. We're working through this. Uh, this is only the third video we've pumped out, but uh, I think it'll be fun. That's, that's what it's all about, fun, and, and hopefully give you guys some behind-the-scenes analysis that you might not be able to see or hear before. So uh, hit the subscribe button, and uh, stay tuned. Thank you.